This tutorial will show you how to use Genome Compiler to compare multiple DNA fragments. Remember that bitter taste ability is determined by a series of SNPs, single nucleotide polymorphisms. Some important background. Remember that DNA has two strands, a 5' to 3' prime strand, the plus strand, and a 3' prime to 5' prime strand, the minus strand. To copy our sequences from our cheek cell DNA during PCR, we used a reverse primer on the minus strand of our DNA. Because of this, the file we receive is the minus strand, which runs in the 3' prime to 5' prime direction. Before working out the amino acid, we should first complement this strand to determine what's on the 5 to 3' prime strand of the DNA. This is important because often this DNA codon triplet is listed in databases such as dbSNP. To determine the amino acids that are produced as a result of the three key SNPs, we need to mentally go through the processes of transcription and translation. Cells transcribe and then translate using the minus strand of the DNA as a template. When it's about to be transcribed, we call the minus strand the template strand. Our first step is to figure out the mRNA sequence that would correspond to this template strand. To do this, we complement the template strand and replace any thiamines with uracil. Second, we're going to translate the mRNA codons into complementary tRNA anticodons, each of which brings with it a specific amino acid. In summary, the mRNA GUC codon codes for the inclusion of valine in the polypeptide. As a shortcut, you can simply complement the minus strand of the DNA and replace the Ts in the minus strand with Us, and then determine the corresponding amino acid that matches the triplet. And now on to Genome Compiler itself. Genome Compiler is a tool that will allow us to look at both the letters, the sequences, of our DNA fragments as well as a related trace file called a chromatogram. Chromatograms tell us how confident the sequencing computer was when it identified a particular base at a given location in a DNA fragment. It uses color-coded peaks to designate a particular nucleotide. Evenly spaced, tall peaks are most accurate. Sequencing software tends to be most accurate in the middle of a fragment and less accurate towards the ends. This is why chromatograms are often very irregular looking at the beginning and end. To begin your analysis, access the participant folder on Google Drive or wherever your sequences are stored. Select the four files. Download the four files as shown by clicking the dot 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 button and then selecting download. You'll notice that three of these say example and one says TAS2R38. This last file is the reference file to which we'll be comparing all other sequences in order to find differences. Place these files in a folder in a location where they'll be easy to find, like your desktop. Log on to Genome Compiler. Before you can use the free version of their software, you'll need to either log into an existing account or to create an account. You may also need to enable Flash Player if you're using a Mac. First, we're going to upload all our sequence files. Click File and then click New Folder. A new folder will appear in the sidebar. If you want, you can rename this folder by right-clicking or control-clicking if you're on a Mac and selecting Rename. I named mine Bitter Taste Chromatograms. Now I need to fill the folder with the sequences I want to use. Click the Import File button in the upper left corner of the screen. It will ask you to find the sequences you want. Mine are on my desktop, so the folder is easy to locate. Select where you want to store the files, which for us is the Bitter Taste Chromatograms folder I just made. Begin by opening the TAS2R38 reference sequence. We're going to compare our other sequences to this one, so it's important to open it first. Double-click it to open the file in the Genome Compiler viewer. Click the Annotation Layers button in the bottom right of your screen and make sure the minus strand box is checked. You can now see the 3 to 5 prime strand from the TAS2R38 reference sequence. We'll be comparing this to the 3 to 5 prime strand of our example sequences. Click the Align button to select a sequence to compare to the reference sequence. Drag the sequence into the box. Before clicking Apply, we'll want to mark any bases that the computer is uncertain about. Set the bottom boxes up as shown, then click Apply. Now we can see the reference sequence and the example sequence lined up next to one another. Remember that we're looking at the minus strand of the reference sequence compared to the minus strand of the example sequence. This split screen view allows us to see both the sequences lined up against one another and a list of all the mismatches the program found. The program has now scanned the entire length of the two fragments and done the grunt work of IDing areas that don't match. If there's a mismatch, the nucleotide letters will be read. Note that if you click on a mismatch, the computer will automatically scroll to that location so you can investigate. Let's try this first one. Remember how we said chromatograms are less accurate at the beginning and ends? Notice the low height of the gray background. 
This tells us that the computer is not particularly certain that this base is correct, and it's also pretty close to the beginning of the strand. It's fairly safe to say that this is just a misreading error. So now let's pick a mismatch closer to the middle of the fragment, which is likely to be more accurate. When we scroll to that location, we can see that the location, C, is red. Genome Compiler has noticed the example sequence doesn't match the reference sequence. Using the same process as before, we can determine which amino acid corresponds to this SNP. Before we sign off, we're going to look at a particularly unusual mismatch. Notice that there are two peaks stacked on top of one another, a black C and also a green T. Both peaks are present. This means that the person is heterozygous at this SNP location. So that wraps up our introduction to Genome Compiler, and we hope that this will be an excellent resource for you. Thanks for watching.